Welcome to Dating Masterclass with Lila. All right, we're doing something new on the podcast. We're gonna do a series of videos on dating, dating etiquette, how to deal with tough things in dating. It's kind of chaos out there. I hear a lot of Gen Zers complain that dating today is harder than it has been for millennials or Gen Xers or certainly boomers, that they have the worst of it. And I think from the stories that I hear, I think that you're right, my Gen Z friends. I'm a millennial, dating was rough for me too. I dated all through my 20s and in my late teens, so I have my stories, I have my experiences to share, but the reality is a lot of people I think are interested in, open for, looking for love and struggling to find it. So welcome to the Dating Masterclass. We're gonna talk about today, start with one of the hottest topics in dating. Yes, you guessed it, breakups. The best coffee to drink when you're going on a date is Seven Weeks Coffee. <laughs> um, Seven Weeks Coffee is the best coffee brand in the country. It's my favorite coffee brand. We've talked about it before in the podcast, but if you haven't bought Seven Weeks Coffee yet, this is a great gift to give to your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your wife or your husband. Or this is just, it is the most gourmet. You have every blend that you could want. One of my favorite blends is the Ethiopia Medium Roast Blend. It is it has notes of citrus and chocolate, and it's just very smooth and delicious. It's awesome. Check out sevenweekscoffee.com if you haven't ordered them already. This is a pro-life company that is supporting the pro-life movement with 10% of all revenue going to pregnancy resource centers. So when you go to sevenweekscoffee.com, you order your medium roast coffee that is chocolatey and citrusy and full-bodied and delicious, and you drink that for your morning coffee 10% of that money goes directly to pregnancy resource centers that are helping moms and babies. So check out sevenweekscoffee.com. Use the code Lila at checkout for 10% off your order and enjoy a cup of the most delicious coffee. Who hasn't experienced a breakup? Many people have. And you know what? There's blessings in breakups. There's actually a lot of blessings in breakups. So we're going to talk about today how to break up, a little bit how to know that you need to break up, and a lot how to do the breakup. Because I'm of the opinion very strongly that how you break up and how you are broken up with can make a huge impact on you and on even your future relationships. Now, you're not doomed to anything, even if you experience the worst breakup ever. The person you broke up with was completely cruel to you. It was such a confusing and chaotic relationship. And then they broke up with you in this completely unkind way. That doesn't mean you're broken and that you can't go on and have a wonderful, amazing future and have find find and marry the love of your life. So no, no one is doomed to anything. Or maybe you made a mistake and you were a total jerk in how you broke up with someone. That doesn't mean you're doomed in the future. The point of this episode is what do we do? How do we do this? And we're going to look at some famous scenes in movies to learn what not to do primarily. Also, what to do. There's actually some good examples, some good food for thought. I'm going to share some personal experiences. It's going to hopefully be more than anything helpful. All right. So first of all, opening thoughts. I think, and I've said this before in the podcast, I actually did my very first OG podcast episode was on principles for dating core principles for dating. And it was, I think it's to this day still the most popular or one of the very most popular of all the podcast episodes I've ever done. I think, strongly believe that the point of dating is ultimately to discern, is this somebody that I want to marry? And if they want to marry you, you want to marry them, you've done some of the basic prep for marriage, then wonderful, get married. It's going to be amazing. This doesn't mean that dating can't be fun. Dating isn't, yes, about building a friendship with someone and really getting to know them as they are, not having this agenda for them. But ultimately, there is more to it than a friendship, right? You're seeing, is this somebody I want to spend the rest of my life with and maybe raise a family with and have kids with, right? Another important context here. All the advice I think I'm going to give or most of it and that we're going to like journey together on, especially like looking at the clips and everything else, it doesn't apply to you if you're in a a really abusive situation. In that situation, go to someone that you know that you trust that has wisdom. If you need help with boundaries or you need help with like dealing with how to get out of that harmful situation and get yourself to emotional and physical safety, okay? All right, another sort of um, background thing here. I also believe that if you have been dating somebody for like a long time, let's say at least a year, maybe two, maybe three, four, and you're still not sure that you want to marry them, do them the favor, 
of lovingly letting them go. Do yourself a favor, do them a favor. If you can't fully commit, if they can't fully commit, and it has been a significant time where we've really gotten to know each other, gotten to know each other's families, you know, spent that time, you're of, you're of age, you know, you're not some teenager, you're in your 20s, you're in your 30s, it's been years, let them go or let yourself go. All right, so then how do you break up? We're gonna start with a scene of what not to do from a movie that many of us have seen and some have not. I actually, in full disclosure, have not seen this entire movie. I have read the Wikipedia and I have watched this clip. So this is from Whiplash. It's about a drummer. It's a psychological thriller. And what's going to happen? You're going to witness a breakup. And you can tell me afterwards if you think this is a good breakup well, or not. I don't not. think that we should be together. And I've thought about it a lot. And this is what's going to happen. OK, I'm going to keep pursuing what I'm pursuing. OK, already I do want to give him kudos that he was direct. I don't see us together. And I think it's very important. That's actually one of the first principles I'm going to say is like, you've got to be direct. If you're going to break up with somebody, don't hedge around, you know, beat around the bushes. Don't hedge it and be like, well, I'm not really sure, but I think maybe we need to break up. Like, be direct. If you're ready to break up, you say, I don't see us being together. You know, maybe you're not attracted anymore. I'm not interested in you in that way. I don't feel that connection. I don't feel like we're meant to get married. I'm not interested. And make it very direct. Also, I think it's also nice that they're in a semi-private, like there's not tons of people around, but it's also semi-public. So it's like they're in a fairly neutral location. Um, Now, depending on the context of the breakup, it might be appropriate to do it over the phone. I'm going to get to that. But I do think it seems like the location is fairly neutral. Maybe a park would be better. It could be a little more private, but still public. But it doesn't seem like an overly busy, you know, restaurant or coffee shop. And because I'm doing that, it's going to take up more and more of my time. And I'm not going to be able to spend as much time with you. And even when I do spend time with you, I'm going to be thinking about drumming. And I'm going to be thinking about jazz music and my charts and all that. And because of that, you're going to start to resent me. And you're going to tell me to ease up on the drumming, spend more time with you because you're not feeling important. And I'm not going to be able to do that. And really, I'm just going to start to resent you for even asking me to stop drumming. All right. So he's like explaining himself a lot. I think it's not necessary to explain this much, but let's see where he goes with this. I mean, it it, it, it looks like it's starting to go down a little bit because he's a, he's doing a lot of you things, like things that he's not happy about her. And so instead of it being like, oh, I'm not interested in you, I don't see a future with you, it's like you are not doing these things for me, right? And it's like, this is where it gets into beating somebody when they're down instead of leaving them with leaving them with love and, and gentleness. So let's see where this goes. And we're just gonna start to hate each other. And it's gonna get very, it's gonna be ugly. And so for those reasons, I'd rather just, you know, break it off clean. Not too bad. I mean, could have been better, but not too bad. Okay. Because I wanna be great. That's a little weird. Let's say maybe theoretically it's true because for him to be great, he can't be in a relationship because he needs to practice on his little <laughs> on his drums, you know, for 50 hours a week. And for whatever reason, you can't be in a relationship in that case. That doesn't mean it's her fault. That's actually more his fault that he needs to be so exclusively dedicated to this work that he doesn't have space in his life for love. And if that's the case, which is sad, I don't recommend that for anyone. But if that is the case, then he should just be honest and say that as opposed to making it like she is holding him back from being great. And when I did see you, you treat me like shit because I'm just some girl who doesn't know what she wants and you have a path and you're going to be great and I'm going to be forgotten and therefore you won't be able to give me the time of day because you have bigger things to pursue. That's exactly my point. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Okay, so even if he thought that, and yes, it's possible to think poorly of someone that you've dated. I'm not recommending that, but it's possible. You don't tell them. You don't say that to them. That's so... So mean. I just want to applaud the girl in the clip because she has enough sense of her value. She's not groveling at his feet. She's not, you know, convincing him to stay. He just dissed her. He just put her down really significantly. And she's just like, I'm I'm out of here. We shouldn't date. And that's good. She has a sense of her self-worth. And anybody in any relationship, I hope that you have a sense of your self-worth. When you date somebody and you need to break up with somebody, You should start, I would say a number one principle is don't delay, you know, get, make the, make it happen. So don't wait around until, okay, I'm going to wait till after their birthday or, oh, I'm going to wait until after the wedding that we have to go to together, or I'm going to wait until after the semester ends. If you are already convinced this is not someone I want to be with, okay, then you need to just call it. 
and be honest with them and set them free. It's not kind or loving or fair, in my opinion, to just continue to date them. In addition, if this is someone that is not long distance and there's someone that you're dating in person, you know, that's not like a long distance relationship, I think it's an in-person conversation. So it's good in this clip that they did that, but obviously how he did it was wrong, but it's good to sit down like a park or, you know, a, a coffee shop or find a, you know, semi-neutral public, semi-public place, you know, don't do it at your apartment or his apartment. You know, I would avoid things like that. I would do it in a neutral place, third party place. And, you know, then we're going to talk what comes next, like how to do this. But don't make them if you're in a long distance relationship. I do not recommend flying across the country to break up with them or making them fly across the country <laughs> to be broken up with. Um, that can be a phone call. That does not need to be an in-person. And again, if there's abuse in the relationship, you don't need any phone calls. You don't need any in-persons. You don't even need a communication. If it's bad enough abuse, you can just boundary yourself and stop talking. Um, or if it's kind of a borderline situation, you could send an email and just be like, I cannot continue this. And I, you know, please do not contact me. So this is the one thing that the guy did well, I think, in the whiplash cl clip is that he was direct. He started out by just saying, I don't think I want to be with you. I don't remember his exact words, but the first words were fairly neutral. Basically, I don't see this moving forward. And I think people deserve that. Oh, I think that maybe we should break up because I am figuring some things out and I really like you, but I'm not sure. Maybe in the future, like give them closure, give them the gift of closure and tell them I'm not interested in being with you anymore and you know I don't feel the connection make that clear by just saying I do not see a future for us and I do not want to continue dating don't beat around the bush all right this next point I think is a little maybe controversial we're gonna watch a clip from a really fun movie um this is one of my favorite books when I was a little kid little women and this is the Joe and one of the Joe and Lori scenes. Don't keep shopping companies that hate your values. All these companies out there that hate pro-life, hate pro-family values, instead find the companies that share your values. How do you do that? It's easy. Public Square is a free downloadable app. You can find it in your app store at the link in the bio. Public Square is basically the Yelp for companies that support your values. There are over 75,000 pro-life, pro-family companies on Public Square that you can survey and you can browse and you can access for free. Download the free Public Square app today at the link in the bio and find the companies that share your values. And now that you're a graduate, you'll be off on a long holiday. So gorgeous, <laughs> wherever it's they're not walking. Good like Beth, so it's so beautiful. Why should we run off and join a pirate ship? Oh, the danger no. of having no. your best no, friend Joe. be Joe, someone of the opposite no. sex. I have loved you ever since oh. I've known you, Joe. I couldn't help it. So and, and I tried tough. to show and you wouldn't let me, which is fine. No. But I must make you here now and give me an answer because I cannot go on like this any longer. Please, please I gave don't. a billion. Ah, I gave a billion like, I'm happy I did. It's fine. And I waited. And Good I acting. never complained because I... F you know, I figured you'd love me, Joe. Oh, shoot. I mean... You kind of got to give them a little credit because they were best friends. They did everything together. So it's not out of the ordinary that if you're best friends with someone of the opposite sex that you would figure that they would love you. I mean, they should, they do love you as a friend and that you'd want something more. So that's often what happens, right? If your best friend is someone of the opposite sex. I don't recommend that. I really don't. Like you can have deep friendships with people of the opposite sex, but I would say your best bud <laughs> should be your mom. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, it can be your mom if you love your mom, but it should be like your brother or your sister or, you know, someone of the same sex because ultimately it's just it's just rough. And then what happens when you date someone? You're not going to be like best friends going getting dinner and getting coffee and like, you know, going on hikes with this one other person of the opposite sex. Like it doesn't doesn't register, right? So I think that a certain level of decorum and sort of boundaries in friendships of the opposite sex, both before, during, and after dating, meaning when you're single, when you're dating, and if you're married, is absolutely essential. And I realize I'm not half good enough, and I'm oh, not this yes, great man. Yes, and yes, yes, you are. You're a great deal too good for me, <laughs> and, I, and I'm so grateful to you, and I'm so proud of you, and I just... <laughs> I don't see why I can't love you as you want me to. I don't know She's why. She's not attracted. I also think he wasn't intellectual no. enough for her. Like that was part I of it. I can't. She ends up marrying this professor, and it would be a lie to say I do when I don't. But she's being so honest, and I think that's I awesome. 
I'm so sorry, but I just can't help it. I can't love anyone else, Joe. I only love you. Teddy, it would be a disaster if we it married. It wouldn't be a okay? disaster. We'd be miserable. Joe, Joe I'd be a perfect saint. I can't. Saint. I can't. I've tried it and I failed. So she's I trying to like, he's pushing her and she's like saying, I can't do it. I can't do it. And okay, first of all, she's being direct. Fantastic. She's like telling him directly. There's no beating around the bush. She's like, I do not see this. I do not, you know, I don't, I, I can't see us together. I can't love you like that. So she's being very direct. Very good. Um, the other thing that I think Joe does that I really love here, actually, and this is going to be kind of my last principle that I wanted to share on good breakups, is that she affirmed him. Like she directly affirmed him as being someone that she's proud of, that she thinks she even says, you're better than me. You're too good for me. I'm not saying you should tell the person you're breaking up with or you're rejecting that they're too good for you, um, unless you sincerely think that. You know, that's a big thing to think. But more that they are somebody that has incredible value as a human being, and they have attributes. And if you believe that they will be a good spouse for someone someday, and it, you know, make someone very happy one day, say that. I really think that you can tell someone when you're breaking up with them, be direct, right? Keep it simple, Find that neutral place, like be honoring of them. Um, don't beat around the bush, but say something affirming of them. You know, leave them with ultimately positive a blessing on them saying like, look, you're an amazing man or woman. You know, look, I think you're going to make someone so happy one day. I don't feel that connection with you, but I know you are a catch. Like I know you are a great person. And yeah, that person may still feel terrible afterwards it still may be a blow to their self-esteem depending on their situation, but I guarantee you that those positive words long-term are good things to leave somebody with. Now, some people might argue and be like, oh, that's leading them on. Like, oh, to say someone, oh, how great they are while you're breaking up with them, it's a mixed message. I totally disagree. If you are breaking up with someone and this is not an abuser you're breaking up with, this is just a person you're not connected to, you don't see a future with for whatever reasons, and you are being direct with them about it. You're telling them, I don't see us getting married. I don't feel that connection with you. I don't desire that with you. But you tell them that they are someone of value that you appreciate and that you know will have a great future. I think that that is honorable. The last thing is, if they don't take no for an answer, so in the scene with Joe and Lori, I mean, he keeps pushing. Eventually, he does take no for an answer and he goes and marries his sister, okay? So there's a happy ending for, for Teddy. But if they don't take no for an answer in the conversation, like have a boundary, right? If they're just like really struggling with it, just be like, listen, this is where this is where it is. This is where I'm at. I don't see a future for us and I'm, I'm sorry. And then call it, you know, just say like, I've got to get going, um, you don't have to talk for five hours about it. Now, if you've dated them for five years, you know, maybe you will talk for a few hours about it. I'm not saying just to not answer any questions, not dialogue with them. But ultimately, you want to signal that your no is a no, that the end is the end in how you behave and how you talk, not just in the physical words you're using, right? Yeah, maybe ha maybe it is a few conversations you'll need to have. Maybe it is a couple meetings, especially if it's a very long relationship. But ultimately, I think that does more to make it hang on the relationship than, you know, giving them positive words about how great of a person they are. If you have made up your mind, right, meeting up with them 10 times to talk about why you've made up your mind to break up with them and having like 10 more dates with them to talk about it, I don't think is a good way to break up. What about just regular everyday rejection though? What about if it's not some big breakup, it's not some big relationship, maybe you went on one date Maybe you didn't go on any dates and like this is someone who's asking asking you out. How do you reject somebody in a classy way? Well, I think the most fundamental way to reject someone in a classy way is the very simple line that says something along the lines of, I'm flattered you asked, but no, thank you. I'm not interested. And maybe, yeah, you're not flattered. Maybe you're, t you're like, you're only a teeny, tiny, 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 tiny bit flattered but the beauty of saying, I'm flattered you asked, unless they're a complete creep, this does not apply. Like if this is someone who you know is like an abusive, super creep, like someone that's not a safe person, you don't even need to respond. You can just ignore. Um, and you certainly don't need to say you're flattered. But this is like just a decent person who went out of their way to ask you out. You know, that takes courage. That takes a, a level of uh, like oomph that you should, I think, acknowledge because it's really hard to do today. Women complain constantly to me 
I hear all the time, nobody's asking guys anyone out. Like guys are not asking girls out. And then maybe they'll get asked out in some way by a guy that they're not interested in. They're like, gross. That's not the way to go. Like if you want to further pollute the dating pool to make guys even more discouraged and even more disenchanted and even less likely to ask anybody out ever again, because like you might not like him, but your friend or your friend's sister might like him, right? So give him that Give them a little positivity of the I'm flattered you asked because it takes courage to ask. So that's why I really like that line. Keep it simple. Keep it classy. Keep it positive. Be direct. I'm flattered you asked. All right. So there's this scene. You might have seen this before. I find it very funny, but I think it's a good, it has a good lesson for us. What do you think the chances are of a guy like you and a girl like me ending up together? Well, Lloyd, that's difficult to say. And we really don't hit me with it. Just give it to me straight. I already blew it, right? It's difficult to say. She doesn't like him. She does not see herself with him. She just say, zero. I'm not. I mean, that sounds harsh. Okay. She just say, that's very sweet, but I'm not interested in you at all. I mean, you gotta, you gotta not lead him on, right? Okay. Wait, just to see you, Mary. Just least you can do is level with me. There you what go. He wants chances? honesty. He wants honesty. What are my chances? Not good. Not good. Okay. Sounds pretty honest. <laughs> you mean not good like one out of a hundred? I'd say more like one out of a million. So you're telling me there's a chance. All right. So that's cute. Yeah! What's the lesson here? Yeah, some people, they will be the eternal optimist. But if, you know, they're the eternal optimist type, it's very sweet. But you're like on the receiving end of that and they're interested in you and they're asking you out. You just say, I'm not interested. If you really are not interested, you do not see yourself with this person. Don't say that there's a one in a million chance. Do not say that. That's actually the one of the worst things that you can say because it's going to make them try harder, okay? So classy rejection is simple. It's final. And it has something like, a, I'm flattered you ask, or, you know, it's really flattering of you, or, you know, it's really thoughtful of you to ask me, or I really admire the courage it took for you to ask me, but I'm not interested, okay? And listen, I think at large, both men and women appreciate sincerity, appreciate respectful communication, and appreciate direct communication, okay? So being direct with the other person in dating is always a good mantra is always a good principle, always a good rule of thumb. Uh, Last one we're going to do here is a, you know, a little bit of a what not to do. Okay. (laughs) You need to hear the truth, Bella. Understand all your options. And I want you to choose me instead of him. Uh, (laughs) I hate this movie, by the way. I understood. I don't (laughs) feel that way for you. I don't buy it. Uh. What don't you buy Okay. Believe them if they tell you that this is a little freebie advice. Believe them if they tell you that they're not interested in you. Believe them. So let's pretend they are, but they're saying that they're not. You don't want to play be with someone who plays games like that. You don't want that. That's going to be a mind trick for you and it's not going to be a healthy it's definitely an unhealthy unstable place to start a relationship. And if they're sincerely not interested, take them at their word and move on so you can move on to something better for you and they can move on to something better for them. That's how I feel. You feel something else for me. You just <laughs> won't admit it. So I'm not giving up. Yikes. I don't know. I think the <laughs> the message here is, first of all, I do think this is like a genre in movies of like the overbearing lover who really wants the girl, you know, sometimes it's the girl who wants the guy, but usually it's the guy who wants the girl, and she's like rejecting him. And I think that there is sort of this fantasy is a strong word, but there's a sort of like romantic narrative around like being pursued so heavily by someone that you don't really love, you don't really want to be with, but they're still pursuing you so heavily and not taking no for an answer. I don't think we should glamorize that. I understand, you know, on an archetypal level that, you know, I think about like salvation and God, like God loves us so much. He sent his only son to die for us, Jesus Christ in a cross. Like he is the ultimate lover who took the worst rejection for the sake of us, right? He took on all of our sin, all all of our rejection. And so I can see, you know, the temptation to kind of romanticize in like a relationship, a romantic relationship, the sort of, I guess, attraction of someone who just like goes to the ends of the earth, 
But the reality is you want a partner. You know, marriage is not about winning someone at the end of the day. It's not. Yes, you want to hold their heart and you want yours to be held too. So I do think a lot of the language of like, he wins her heart. Yeah, yeah, he does. And she wins his. But at the end of the day, you're partners and you are going to be spouses in a marriage and you're going to be in it together. And there's not one who should be, you know, always pursuing the other more than the other. I don't think that, you know, yes, my husband in our like dating and stuff, he totally pursued me. He did a beautiful job. But I also had to pursue him in terms of, you know, really love him and care for him and show him that I wanted I wanted to be with him. It wasn't just him loving me all day. Like I wanted to love him, too. What's the lesson here? The lesson is here is if you want to reject them, reject them in a classy way. And, you know, if you're listening and you're a woman who is really into this guy that's just not into you, let it go. Like you are beautiful. God has a plan for you. You are unique. There's someone out there, I believe, for just you. If you're called to marriage, there's someone out there for just you who's going to love you as you are and help you be better and help you live a beautiful life. Don't waste your time and your emotional energy on someone that is out of reach because they're not seeing you the same way, okay? And if you're a guy and you're really into this girl, like she's someone that you're just so in love with and she's just not interested. Yes, I I know that hurts, but there's something better for you. Not that she's not good enough and there's some better girl, but I'm saying better for you. Like there's someone that you will be loved by who will want to receive your love and your affection and your attention And it's going to be beautiful. But if you're just pouring all your energy emotionally and your angst into like, this is someone I want to be with so badly and they don't want to be with me, I know it's hard, but you got to let it go. So my advice, I don't, it's just the werewolf and the other guy's the vampire. So um, don't be like the werewolf, I guess. Be the vampire instead. No, don't be, don't be any creepy guy from whatever girl from this movie. But the point is like, unrequited love hurts, but that's not your destiny. And the best way to move out of unrequited love is to direct your love towards the people that do love you back and your energy towards building those strong relationships where you can grow as a person. Ultimately, I believe towards God who always loves us back. He is love itself. And we're only gonna be fulfilled in God who's complete and perfect love. But in this life, in our human affairs, you know, don't don't sit in the unrequited love. Like it's not the place to end up. There's something that God has for you. So have hope. And if you are going on a date, you'll want to look great. So go to CarlyJeanLosAngeles.com and find the cutest. And this doesn't have to be just a date with someone that you're not married to. If you're married, you can go get an outfit and there's clothes for men too. But CarlyJeanLosAngeles.com is a clothing company that shares your values, that has on-trend, ethically sourced, adorable pieces. It has capsule collections so you can find the basics for everyday wear as well as those great special pieces to spice up that everyday wear, that special sweater, that fun pair of pants, that scarf, that special dress. Check out CarlyJeanLosAngeles.com. They have some great stuff in for the fall, great jackets, some great dresses, some great sweaters. CarlyJeanLosAngeles.com and use the code Lila Rose at checkout for 20% off your order. One more principle, leave them better than they found you. We'll probably do a dating episode just on this, but I'm really, this is a really important one. Leave the person better than they found you. What do I mean by that? Don't sleep with them. Like, you know, this is not someone that you're going to be using their body and giving them your body for pleasure and connection, even though you're not committed in a lifelong marriage. Like, don't do that. Give them friendship, share your values, share experiences together that are maybe beautiful, but have those boundaries in your relationship so that when you leave that relationship, they were edified by you. They were ultimately encouraged by you. They weren't scarred by you. And so my closing thoughts here. God really does have a plan. He has a plan for your life. I do not know what it is, okay? I don't even know what God's plan is for my life tomorrow because I might not live till tomorrow. We are not promised tomorrow. This life is pure gift. We can't really fully earn those gifts or lose those gifts. You know, we can try to be better people. We can try to follow God and do all of these things. But at the end of the day, when one door closes, God has a plan. And the most important thing, I think, in all of dating, yes, this is a Christian message, this is a message of faith, is trust. Trust that there is a plan, trust that it's going to work out, and a willingness to treat the people that we encounter 
whether we're dating them or we're having to break up with them or we're being broken up with, treating those people with respect. At the end of the day, we're all human beings who have dignity and who deserve respect. So remember, every breakup is a preparation for meeting that love of your life. If you're called to marriage, hang in there, have hope. It's going to be awesome.